It's a dry, verbose document that most people don't completely understand. But the comprehensive plan is going to determine Jackson Hole's future, and in turn, many of our futures. So just what do you know about the comp plan? I really don't know anything about the comp plan. I don't think we should uh, get rid of natural land. I, I think there's a danger in growing too much. I don't know much about the comp plan. I think it's just kind of the bureaucracy of it all. It kind of disinterests me. I don't really know much about the comp plan itself. I, I do know that is kind of a big issue that's pending as to what happens with the future of Jackson Hole. I guess I've seen several articles that have been printed, but there's so much reading material all the time um, that you have to pick and choose. And that is not something that I choose to read about because it just hasn't really been presented in an engaging way. Bill Collins is former Teton County Planning Director. He's also a part of the group Plan JH, a local nonprofit that wants to demystify the comp plan for the public. During a recent interview, Collins translated a lot of the gray, convoluted areas that comprise the comp plan. What he explained to me is that we need to view the comp plan as a roadmap on the way Jackson Hole wishes to change and grow. The comprehensive plan uh, is an evolution of the existing plan. People refer to the existing plan as the 1994 comp plan because that's when it was adopted, even though it was amended multiple times throughout the 90s. But the 94 comprehensive plan attempted to cluster new development within the boundaries of existing parcels, mostly the rural areas in the unincorporated county. The, the current comprehensive plan takes that idea one step forward and it talks about uh, clustering development on a countywide basis. So the current plan uh, is attempting to relocate or to shift the location of future development from some of the outlying rural areas into existing areas of development, such as the town of Jackson, Wilson, like Rafter J, and Melody Ranch. And as we get into the town of Jackson, there are several different neighborhoods that have their own distinctive characteristic. And a part of the mapping process that the town and the county are about to begin will look at these individual neighborhoods, try to assess their character, try to determine how much they should change or stay the same. Uh, East Jackson uh, is uh, a neighborhood that many people think about as being stable, fully developed, not much capacity for additional development. It will most likely stay very similar to its existing character. Uh, areas uh, around Snow King and, and around 43 North, those areas may take on a slightly different character, but that's yet to be determined. Uh, Jackson's a, a great place, but there's no great place that doesn't have the uh, potential for being better. Plan JH brought world-renowned conservation planner Randall Arendt to Jackson Hole. Arendt discussed the importance of walkable communities, effective alley design and mixed uses, the importance of incorporating green spaces into both residential and non-residential development. I sat down with Arendt and had the opportunity to see Jackson Hole through the eyes of a visitor. When people live in a place, they, they don't tend to notice a lot of their surroundings. It's like wallpaper. Uh, but as a visitor, you can come in with fresh eyes and say, well, that Maverick gasoline station, that's fantastic. That's the best gasoline station I've seen anywhere. It's a wonderful architectural design. It's not just single story. It's beautifully landscaped. The, the gas pumps are essentially behind it as you come from one direction or the Albertsons built uh, on the north end of the property, close to the road, is, is just a, a, a breakthrough in, in design because now the, 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 uh, the front of the building faces south, which is where, exactly where we want it to face.
to be you know, friendly to the human environment. But it's exactly counterintuitive to the way that zoning would have created Albertsons in the absence of any kind of design intervention. Albertsons would have had a north-facing building with a parking lot dominating the view from the highway. And now what dominates the view from the highway is the building and trees and the parking, which is never, you know, the most attractive element of any uh, development, is essentially hidden or buffered behind. An example of things that people might drive by all the time and never see as a visitor would be the Western Motel. And I happen to know, I met the, the, the owner last night, and he says he can't wait to redevelop that, but the economy has put his plans into stall. But what he wants to do is totally in sync with you know, the comprehensive plan views for you know, having a, a, a real mixture of uses on the property with uh, you know, residential uses and office uses and uh, retail uses and restaurant uses. As a visitor, I can see opportunities for uh, redevelopment that would make this place even better.